Hello and welcome back. My name is Sam and this is Car Legion. Welcome back to another video. For today's video, we have the all new Audi Q3. The one that we have for today's video is the fully loaded Technic option, which is basically the third trim level for this vehicle. For today's video, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to know about the all new Audi Q3. We will go through all the trim levels that you get with this new Audi Q3, and of course, we're gonna talk about the exterior, interior, and then we're gonna take it on the road for a test drive. For today's video, special thanks goes to Audi Brampton. This is an Audi dealership located in Ontario, Canada, in Brampton, which is about 45 minutes or so from Toronto. The link for their dealership will be in the description box, and of course, their Instagram and Facebook if you wanna reach out and take this beauty for a test drive. Now, let's start reviewing the all new Audi Q3. This vehicle is offered in three uh, trim levels. The first one is the Comfort, which starts at $38,000 technically making it the cheapest Audi SUV that you can buy. The second one is the Progressive, which starts at $42,000 Canadian, of course. And the third one is the Technic, the one that we have today with the S package that starts at $45,000. Without the S package, only the actual Technic starts at $45,000. If this is your first time watching my videos, don't forget to hit subscribe and like and check out my other reviews as well. The one that we have for today, as I mentioned, is the fully loaded. So I'm gonna go through the actual features that you get with this specific uh, trim level that we have here and with all the features that this model comes with. So here's what we have for this specific vehicle. First, we have the S-Line Sport Package, which is technically appearance package with aggressive look in front on the rear side as well. Next, you get the Advanced Driver Assistant Package, also called the PDU, and you also get the 20-inch 5e spoke star design wheels the matte titanium look and the gloss turned finish with the 25540 r20 performance tires it also comes with the audi connect and the audi phone uh, box with the qi wireless charging pad now let's move on to the exterior of the vehicle let's talk about what they offer with this uh, model for this year's uh, edition first of all you get 11 exterior paint choices six out of those 11 you can only pick with the s package the one that we have for today it's called the mythos black which kind of sounds like a greek beer next onto the front end of the vehicle first of all what do we have in here led headlights with a very different and unusual turning signal and of course we got the daylight running light led as well you also get the 360 camera which is located over here and of course on the rear side and on each side uh, and of course the side mirrors as well you we also get the parking sensors located at the bottom over here and of course we have on the rear side the overall look on the front of the vehicle because it has the s package it has looks very aggressive and sporty at the same time next will be the side of the vehicle first we have the folding mirrors which are automatically folded once you lock the vehicle you can also control them from inside onto the door panel for the driver's side we do get the 20 inch wheels with this package specifically of course you have the keyless entry and it does come with a key fob which is this one over here uh, the options you get on this key fob is basically lock unlock and of course for the tailgate you can also lock it and unlock it, of course, through the keyless entry on both doors, the front and the rear sides. As far as design, as you can see, you can get the chrome finish around the doors and on top of that, you get the chrome uh, trim at the top for the uh, rails. Now, let's move on to the rear side. So first of all, what do we have? Power tailgate, LED tail light, and of course with a sequential uh, effect onto the top side of the actual tail light. Next, in order to open the tailgate, you have a couple of options. First of all, you can do it through the key fob, which we have for today. You can press it once and then hold it. And here you go, it opens up. You cannot close it with the key fob. You have to do it manually, or you can do the active foot release option, which technically closes and opens the tailgate. After a few testings, I found that the sensor for that option is located onto the right side of the vehicle. If you try on the left side, 
it doesn't seem like it has any sensors on the left side. You can also open it through the, of course, the standard button located uh, on top of the license plate. And you do get two extra options on the tailgate. First, you can close it with the button located on the left, or you can lock the entire vehicle and, of course, the tailgate at the same time by pressing that button. So the trunk itself looks very massive, it's pretty big, you got enough space here to, and on top of that you do get a spare tire located under here with the jack and of course the wrench to use to, for the lug nuts. You can also fold the three seats, the middle one you can just fold it like that without pressing anything. The other two you have to actually press the button located on top of the seat um, onto the recliner to actually fold the seats and to do that you kind of have to go like this inside this part in order to access the uh, button. You also have spaces onto the left side and the right side of the trunk. As you can see, you got this part over here which you can remove technically and to fit bigger objects. Now, let's check out the engine. So, what do we have in here? You have a two liter, four cylinder TFSI engine producing about 228 horsepower. This is the only engine offered for all the uh, three trim levels. And of course you get an eight speed automatic transmission, which is the Tiptronic with the paddle shifters for this specific package. Now let's get inside and let me show you around about the uh, interior features. And we're gonna start first with the rear side, show you the comfort level and the features that you get onto the rear side of the vehicle. Okay, so first of all, what do we have in here? You got leather seat interior on the rear side. We have an armrest located onto the center. And of course you can fold the entire armrest to get more space if you wanna put stuff across, if there's something long that you need to actually take. If you're ever going to Ikea and you need more space, you can do that. You can also fold all three of them at the same time. You have switches located onto the side over here that you can do so. The actual seat itself can be adjusted back and forth, which is kind of rare for SUVs to offer such thing nowadays. Uh, as you can see on both sides, you can do it for the seat over here, and of course for the seat onto this side. This one on the other side moves completely together uh, with that seat over there. We do get two USB ports located at the bottom. You also get an ambient light onto this side. We got two switches here to lock and unlock on from the rear side. Of course, we have the inside uh, light located at the top over here, which you can turn on with the switches located onto the center. And we do get air condition vents over here, but you don't get any controls for the actual climate control. You can only adjust it from the front side. You only have two vents located in there. The overall seating position is perfect. The leg room is where it should be. You got enough space in front over here. And of, and of course you got some space between the roof and my hair, as you can see. You don't feel uncomfortable, you can move around. Now, let's move on to the front. Okay, onto the front, specifically the passenger seat at the front. You have power seats, uh, you can adjust. Uh, the seat, seating position for the recliner and of course the actual seat itself. You don't get any massage seats or any cooling seats with this option. The only thing you do get is the power seat. You have an ambient light around the vehicle as you can see the thin line across onto this side and of course you got the light located on the dashboard that says Quattro over here. Very good design, the interior is very spacious in the front. Uh, as far as comfort level, I do feel very comfortable about a space. A lot of leg room in here. You can stretch your legs quite nicely and of course, you got space on the right side. The door itself is leather, of course. The seat is leather in here. You do get two cup holders located onto this side and you have an armrest with uh, some space in there. Armrest, kind of tiny, not really big but good enough uh, for both sides. You also get a moonroof, as I mentioned, on the rear side. You can adjust it with the switches located at the top over here. We don't get is a, a sunglass compartment. Seems like all vehicles nowadays are not coming with a sunglass compartment. I find it to be a very good thing to have. I find it easy um, to, 
I, I think it's necessary to have one because I use my sunglasses all the time. Specifically, the one that I have today, these are prescription glasses, so I have to wear them all the time in order to see things properly. Um, in this case, I'm using them to actually show you around. Now, let's move on to the center console. As you can see, over here, we have the gear knob. The gear knob, very standard, uh, and of course, you've got the manual transmission options. At, you have a manual option as well by shifting it all the way into the right side, and you can use the pedal shifters. You also get the power parking brakes as well, where you can engage and disengage from here. You get a little spot in here for your key fob, so you can put your key fob in there. And at the same time, it has this little cover on top of it, which you can remove in case it gets dirty. Door panels have them as well. On this side, I can see there is one as well that you can pull out to clean if it gets dirty. Next, so what we have is basically a USB port over here, and you have your wireless charging uh, pad located in there where you can charge your phone over here for the switches you have the downhill assist you got the parking assist the parking assist helps you to park the vehicle okay let's go through some of the menu settings so first of all what we have in here touch screen a 10 inch display it doesn't actually have a scroll button it's fully touch screen uh, you can go left and right so the options you get is radio media phone navigation phone apps vehicle shortcuts settings and of course help user and messages news and of course the weather if you just hover over each uh, icon you basically see the reaction for each icon as you can see for the settings in there you can arrange all the actual icons whichever one you want to be the first last or second same thing as you do with the phone so let's move on to the next menu let's start with the actual settings so we have general of course you got date time measurement units mobile uh, device reminder signal is that if you leave it in the actual charging port it will tell you that you have forgotten your phone uh, the subscription and uh, commands for the voice output as well that's uh, the general we have the display and brightness this vehicle is not equipped with the uh, heads-up display then you have language and sound. We have a premium uh, sound as well. You can control everything in here, the bass balance, uh, it comes with a subwoofer as well and the surround level. And we have of course the mobile phone network. You have the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi connectivity as well. Let's go back into the home. Uh, you have the vehicle, you can adjust all the uh, settings in here. First, you have the Audi Drive Select. We have a couple of Audi Drive, uh, we have a couple of driving modes. You can select them through here. You have the Off Road, the Comfort, you have Auto, Dynamic, and of course, Individual. You also have the driver assistant package, also called the PDU, which helps you with your traffic light information, adaptive cruise assist, distance warning, Audi presence, side assist, and lane departure warning as well. You also get the speed warnings. If you want the computer to tell you you're reaching a maximum speed, it will do so in case if you forget and you go over the speed limit. You have light and visibility. You have the exterior uh, lightning, automatic headlights, entry and exit lighting. You have the interior lighting for the ambient light inside. You can change the brightness and of course you can pick different colors. You have 30 colors to choose from. Now let's go back. Then of course you have the rain sensor as well. You got parking aid which you can control from here. You'll get the phone apps as well. Once you connect it to your uh, phone, as you can see, connect your iPhone to the vehicle to use the wireless Apple CarPlay. So you can connect it through uh, the uh, wireless option. And of course the navigation system which is built in. And this of course is the navigation system that is the one from Google, provided by Google. So technically you have your Google Maps in here, which will make people uh, use their phones less to go to place instead of having their phone displayed in here with the map, which I technically use a lot. So those are some of the features that you have for the infotainment system. Okay, next let's move on to the actual uh, cluster. So what we have in here is the digital cluster. As you can see, it's a 12.3 inch full digital display. Uh, and of course you got the map display as well in here. You can control them through the switches onto the steering wheel. Right now you have the map. You can change the view by decreasing and increasing the uh, actual speedometer and of course the tachometer as well. Right now you have a full display off the map. You can also have the map at the same time onto the actual infotainment system on the 10 inch display 
at the same time something that you wouldn't be able to do it on a Volkswagen for example where you can only display it at once in one place uh, in here of course you got the uh, different style as well that you can change depends on the type of driving you're doing you can change the actual overlay you can change the overlay of the actual cluster uh, by having different modes so you can change the settings the display and the brightness as well you can increase and decrease from the infotainment system now you can also change the actual uh, virtual cockpit uh, layout so right now we have it in classic and now it's in dynamic So as you can see, this is technically in dynamic. So on the left side is your tachometer and on the right side is your speedometer. Um, very different, so just more sporty looking. And then the next one is the sport looking uh, layout. Next, the menus that you get uh, for the cluster, it's basically your trip, you got your Sirius XM, your telephone, and of course the navigation system, and the short-term memory which, dis which displays uh, your uh, driving habits, and of course the fuel efficiency as well. So those are some of the settings that you get for the cluster. Um, very nice cluster i love the fact that it's digital i love the fact that cars are moving towards digital screens i prefer them a lot because you get different layouts and of course uh for sport mode you can change the layout if you want to have some fun with it you also get non-digital uh for the fuel tank on the right side and on the left side is your uh temperature okay let's go for a drive i'm really excited to find out how good this thing is first of all you got a beautiful backup camera that you can change all the settings in here you got a 360 mode you can also just tap onto each side of the screen here as you can see and it will show you basically whichever camera you want very intelligent uh, very intuitive very fast I love this MMI system from Audi so let's reverse well, one thing is that the uh, parking brake over here um, doesn't release automatically once you put it into reverse or drive. So you have to actually disengage it before you move. Um, I'm kind of used to the Range Rover that I'm driving for this week, which automatically does it for you. You also don't get any power steering column. This is manual mode, so you have to adjust it yourself. Um, Got a paddle shifters here, love the steering wheel. It's so grippy onto the side and that's because of the S package that you get with this uh, the trim level, the Technic. You have all wheel drive system, eight speed automatic transmission and of course the four cylinder, which is the only engine offered for the Q3 in any trim level that you pick, you get the two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine, which is called the TFSI. We have a couple of driving modes. We're gonna test them out once we take it on a straight line and see how different they are from each other. We're gonna test out the noise cabin as well, see how noisy it is inside. The DBA meter shows 72 dB. That is very good. That's very good. Uh, let's look at a bit of performance. Let's put into manual. We're gonna change the drive mode in to uh, Comfort Auto Dynamic. So, and then we have it in manual mode into downshift. So it is an automatic transmission, eight speed automatic basically. And okay, we're just gonna let this guy go. All yours, but into third. transmission is fine nothing crazy here normal trip normal tiptronic eight-speed automatic transmission if you want to have some fun as I'm doing right now just put it into manual mode and of course uh, you are the one in command of the actual shifting so it's not the same as a manual clutch but it just gives you an impression that you're actually uh, driving manually 
the ride quality is not as stiff. I expect it to be a bit more stiffer, but it's not. It's perfect uh, for day-to-day -day use. Um, we're right now going into, we're going uh, through some rough roads, not necessarily gravel or off-road, but it's not well paved uh, and it's not in a great condition. So right now the vehicle feels like totally normal. I don't feel uncomfortable while driving it. So that just gives you an idea. Again, me telling you, it's not gonna show everything, but it will give you an idea of the actual ride quality. Um, and you can also kind of soften it up and stiffen it up, depends on the driving mode. The throttle reaction is not quite there. Uh, it's not as quick. I expected a bit more power, but it's 228 horsepower, so don't expect anything crazy. The idea here is for, uh, the target here is fuel efficiency. It's not necessarily performance. Uh, the turbo seems like it takes a bit of time to spool on this vehicle. Like you th throttle down and it's moving. Yeah. So again, target it's not performance this is not a track vehicle this is your day-to-day -day, but they're giving it the impression that you have a bit of performance with it not necessarily uh, an RS3 type vehicle but it's good enough for day-to-day -day use anyways that was it for today thanks for watching as always don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to check out uh, Audi Brampton there at the dealership that was kind enough to allow me to review this vehicle and of course their information will be in the description box with Instagram and Facebook and the website also special thanks goes to our other partner which is Conquest Canada Conquest Canada helps you find the right car they have all the sales consultants across dealerships from Ontario in Ontario uh, they will help you find the right car for the right price. The link for that will be in the description box. I love this thing. Thanks for watching.